Piecewise functions. Um, guys, there's just a couple things that we want to make sure that we remember um, for the piecewise functions. First of all, piecewise function notation, remember, is just a collection of two or more functions. So we're going to have something, let's go ahead and do x minus 1, x is greater than or equal to 1, and then absolute value of x minus 1, x is less than 1. Okay, so what we talked about with piecewise functions is we talked about graphing a piecewise function, evaluating a piecewise function, and then finding the value k where the function is continuous. All right. So if you are asked to graph a piecewise function, the couple things you need to know is first what the parent graphs of your two equations are. So the first one is we have y equals 2 to the x, which is an exponential equation. Um, on your on your notes, we used e as the base, but it doesn't matter if it's e, 4, or 2. The general shape of that graph looks like this, right? And that is from last quiz, so it's something we're already supposed to know. Um, the y-intercept is 0, 1. And basically, there's a horizontal asymptote and like the general idea you should have. The next one is the absolute value function. So remember, that is the v-shaped graph, which you spent a lot of time in Algebra 2 talking about. Okay. So the first thing you should know is, all right, I should know the, at least the parent graph, so at least those 12 basic functions, because I gave them to you and I told you to make sure you know them. The next thing you should know is what are the transformations of each of those functions. Um, and that was, again, in the pre that was again tested on the previous quiz. So as you, as you guys look at this, you can see that this is being shifted one unit to the right. So if I take this parent graph and shift it one unit to the right, this y-intercept, or this point, which is the y-intercept, is now going to be shifted over to 1, 1. Yes? No? OK. So then the graph now looks something like that. Okay. Um, and then what we really talked about for piecewise functions is, well, now we're going to add a constraint. And the constraint, the domain constraint is, I only want to graph this function for the x values that are greater than or equal to 1. Well, here's where 1 is. So for x values greater or equal to 1 is only going to be this section. So therefore, the rest of it needs to go away. Then we look at the next one, and we see absolute value of x minus 1. And that is being shifted one unit to right. So basically, you're taking this graph and shifting it one unit to the right. So the vertex here would be shifted over 1. So the graph would look like this. But again, this one has a domain restriction as well. It says only graph this for x is less than 1. So for x values that are less than 1, it's only over here. And it's not equal to. It's just less than. So therefore, we need to use a open circle. There we go. So that's what the graph would look like. Now, from the graph, um, I think it's helpful to identify the domain, which would be, in this case, all real numbers. And the range would be from 0 to infinity. Remember, 0 is not included, so we're going to use a parenthesis. Um, also, what we can do from here is evaluate the function. So I could say, hey, what is the value of f of negative 1? Now, to make my point with this, I'm going to look at where is x equal to negative 1. Negative 1 is right here. I didn't draw a scale on this graph. So negative 1 is this point like right up there. Yes? Now, on the scale, do we know what the value of negative 1 is? No, because I don't have any scaling, right? So the point that I want to make is, what function is this point on? Is it on the absolute value function or the exponential? Absolute, absolute value. So would you agree with me? It makes no sense for me to plug in negative 1 into this exponential to find the value of f of negative 1. Yes. When you look at negative 1, it's on the absolute value function. Why is that? Because negative 1, this function, absolute value, is only defined for x values that are less than 1. You don't plug negative 1 into this function because this function is for only x values that are greater than or equal to negative 1. No matter how many times I say this, students still plug negative 1 into both equations. It's only evaluated on the absolute value. So if I wanted to algebraically figure out that value, I just plug in negative 1, and I get positive 2. Okay? And you could do this again, guys. You could do, you know, you could do this for f of 1 as well. Like here, f of 1, you look at this. Well, we can't plug in 1 here into the absolute value because it's undefined at 1, right? But it is defined in this equation. So you say, oh, that's for x is greater than or equal to 1. So you just plug in a 1 there, 2 to the 1 minus 1, which equals 2 to the 0, which equals 1. Right? So we can graph, domain and range. Uh, we looked at. Um, graph, domain and range. We looked at the discontinuities, right? This is a jump discontinuity. Uh, 
we, and then, then the last thing was we looked at is we looked at the value k that makes the function continuous. So what if I said, oh, what if I give you a value k and I say, hey, I want these two equations to be continuous. So basically, I want this k, and if you notice, I'm adding a k outside of the function, right? The k is being out, out, so that's shifting the graph up or down. So basically, what I'm asking is, what, what number do I need to move this graph up or down so that it fills in like this hole, makes it continuous? What do I need to do? What does k need to be? Yeah? Negative 1, because if k was negative 1, this graph would be shifted down 1, and the graph would look like that, and it would now be continuous, right? So that's what, I, that's what I taught you guys originally to visually make sense. But the problem with that argument is, what if k was right here? Do you know what stretch you would need to k to be for them to be the same? Or what if k was up here, right? It kind of gets a little bit now more confusing as far as what we're going to need to do, like where k is. So we need an algebraic method to understand how to find the value of k no matter where it is, okay? Or no matter what the functions are. The important thing you notice is when, fun when a two functions are continuous, they share this point. And again, they share this point when, um, or let's look at this. So here, if it, here the two functions are not continuous. Here the functions are continuous. What is the x value? where they're either going to meet or not meet. Is it x equals negative 7, x equals 7? Where is that x value? Yes? x equals 1. x equals 1. And again, that is apparent in there, right? We look, remember, we looked at all the graphs. And we say, oh, wow, at, at, those domain restrictions tell you where those graphs are going to connect or disconnect. So if they are continuous, that means they share this point. That means the x and the y value is the same. So to represent that algebraically, we want these two equations to be the same so therefore, we're going to set them equal to each other, which is basically saying we want the y values, because those are both set equal to y, to be the same. And we want them to be the same when x is equal to y. 1. So we want them to be the same when x is equal to 1. Oh, 1. So therefore, 1 minus 1 is 2 to the 0 plus k equals absolute value of 0, 1 plus k equals 0, k equals negative 1. So now you guys can see that, oh, visually we already knew the answer, right? But not all the time are you going to have something that's visually easy to do. Sometimes you may do it that way. So we need to make sure we can understand this algebraic approach as well. Okay? So again, graph, domain, discontinuities, evaluate, and find the value k. That's basically what we covered in piecewise functions. So what did I miss, or what questions do you guys still have that I can help with you before I move on to